Hey everyone, welcome to church. I'm so excited to be sharing the word today. So I pray that you've come expectant, ready to hear and receive from the word of God. Um, I'll be sharing something that God has really put on my heart and spoken into my own life. So um, I really pray it's going to speak to you and it's going to um, maybe help you change a couple of things that um, need to have some adjustment. So stay tuned for what's coming. But um, think about this. Your words will reveal what your heart agrees with. Just let that sink in for a second. Your words will reveal what your heart agrees with. I don't know if you've ever thought about it like that. But what you're speaking essentially is revealing who and what you're agreeing with. So I'm going to be unpacking that a little bit more. But um, I'm definitely getting more and more convicted about the power of the words that I'm speaking. So, you know, not just when I'm praying and declaring God's word, God's promises, but also in the small daily conversations. Maybe you're having coffee or uh, breakfast with your husband or your kids. Do you ever stop to notice the words that you're speaking? Maybe you're facing disappointment or discouragement. What are the language? What are the words that you're speaking in those moments? So um, I am becoming more and more grateful when I feel convicted by the Holy Spirit. Because when we feel convicted, it's actually God showing us an area of our life that He is wanting us to... Um, become more mature in. It's not for us to feel condemned or ashamed or just feel guilty, but it's actually, um, it's highlighting something that needs attention. So I really believe that as we get going, God is going to speak to you. So let's pray and I will get right into it. Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are speaking truth, that you are speaking life. Um, I thank you that you are so dedicated at doing the journey with us, you know, one day at a time moving towards Christ. Um, I pray for this message. May you help me, Lord. May you speak to every single listener something unique and specific to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So if you're taking notes, why don't you write down, your words will reveal what your heart agrees with. So um, why is that important? You know, I, um, I like to begin with a little story. So before, you know, before I went to Australia, before I uh, was in my 20s, I grew up in a church that was, let's just say it's quite different than the one that we are in right now. You know, I loved my church. It was um, quite small. It was also a different denomination. And uh, let's just say it was a little bit more conservative in its ways of um, different rituals that we were doing and its views of the Bible. But I grew up becoming quite critical, quite judgmental. Have you ever said these words? You know, I'm not judging, I'm just saying something, you know, but it's actually, it's quite judgmental at the core. And uh, I like to refer these days as my Pharisee days. I love pointing out the fault in someone else. Hey, they shouldn't be doing this. Why are they doing and saying that? Because in a strange way, it made me feel better because I was looking at their faults. And you know, that's what a Pharisee is. Someone who's pointing out the faults in everyone else and refuses to look at what's going on on the inside of them. So uh, if you're finding yourself today, hey, maybe this is my strongest area, speaking life, um, being careful with my words. You know what? There is grace and there is forgiveness and We've all been there. We've all said something stupid that we shouldn't have. So don't worry. We're all in the same boat here. But the thing is with criticism, maybe uh, you're a parent and you're listening to this. And I'm sure at some point someone has made some critical words about the way you've chosen to raise your kids, different um, routes you've been decided to take when it comes to parenting. Um, maybe you've got debt and people are being critical at how you're spending your finances. Hey, you shouldn't be spending money on this and this, or um, maybe when it comes to, remember the days when we were teenagers, 
Some of us were a little bit too chubby or too skinny or having braces or, you know, whatever it was that was a little bit different, people were very quick at pointing it out and making it, making us aware. And um, that's the thing with criticism. We feel so justified in speaking out um, the wrongs and the faults of everyone else. But like I mentioned earlier, it was my own insecurities that made me just focus on everyone else. And um, <clears throat> words are powerful because they can stick with a person for years. But we also know that a single word of encouragement from God can really give us the life and the faith to keep going. And um, in Galatians 5, 14 to 15, I'm gonna read you this. It says, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. You know, most people have heard this verse. Whatever religion you're in, you have some sort of form of, hey, love your neighbor as yourself. But then it's the second verse after that, where the context, it's actually people being so critical in their own words to each other that they are destroying one another. And that's what criticism does. You know, criticism can destroy the potential of your marriage. It can destroy the relationships in your businesses. It can destroy your relationship with your kids. And um, <clears throat> we need to be very careful with those careless words that we can throw out sometimes. And Paul, um, he also says it in uh, Ephesians 4, 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And I hear that verse, I feel convicted already because I know I don't always get it right. I know I don't always say, you know, the most encouraging and building up. Even to Ben, sometimes we'll be eating breakfast or I don't know about you, but do you ever have moments where you just, you say something and then you hear it and you realize, wow, I, why did I say that? I should not have said that. So I'm sure I'm not alone, but um, I uh, definitely feel very convicted that sometimes I might not speak those destroying words of a bin, but I'll be speaking it over myself. I'm speaking words that are destroying the potential within myself. And maybe that's a word for someone right now. What words are you speaking over your own life, over your own situation? Are you tearing yourself down by your own words? Think about that for a little bit. <clears throat> but we use words in a very powerful way in many settings. When uh, I got engaged to Ben, it started with saying, yes, I wanna get married. And then we got married. And at the ceremony, we declare, we say, yes, I do. Um, also repeating our vows, our commitments to one another. And when we sign that paper, it's actually just to um, witness the, the words that we had already spoken, the commitment that we had made each other. So words are powerful. And also in salvation, it says that we believe with our heart and we confess with our mouth onto salvation. So words play a key part in so many areas of our lives. And uh, again, I just wanna say your words will reveal what your heart agrees with. So why do we need to know this? Maybe you've, you know, maybe you've heard it a billion times. Hey, your words, be careful what's coming out of your mouth. Um, but it's more than just saying words are powerful. The Bible actually say our words have the power of life and death. So that might seem a little bit heavy, but if you would go with me in Proverbs 18, 20 to 21, I'll read it to you. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of death and life, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So in many ways, our words shape our future. Let me just take some water for a sec. They shape our future. 
And in the same chapter, chapter 18, it um, before in verse 7, it says this, A fool's mouth is his destruction. His lips are a snare of his soul. A snare meaning a catch, a trap. And the soul referring to, you know, many believe it's the thoughts, the emotion of a person. And your words impact your thoughts, your emotions. And we know that if we keep repeating the same negative words of, hey, I'm not good enough. I'll never get ahead. Oh, this will never happen. I'm so bad at whatever it is. We are reinforcing something within ourselves. And uh, <clears throat> these words are actually killing the potential within you. Secondly, speaking life, you know, I said we have the power to speak life or death, but speaking life does not mean living in ignorance. It doesn't mean I'm facing a huge obstacle and I'm just going to declare something else. You know, if you think about the Israelites when they were um, sending spies to check out the promised land, people came back, the spies came back, reported to the people, you know, there are giants in the land. We are like grasshoppers in their sight. We will never be able to conquer them. All right, that's quite an, a negative speech of unbelief. But then Caleb says, yes, there are giants in the land, but God is able to help us um, conquer them. So he didn't neglect that there was an obstacle to overcome, but he also had the faith and the speech aligned with God's word, with God's help, we're able to overcome. Uh, so let's keep that in mind as we move on to the third point. Not only does your word shape your life, but they also set the direction of your life. I don't know about you, but I hadn't taken a lot of time to actually think about how important the words I speak, how much they actually direct my life until I read James 3. And uh, it's, I think, the biggest uh, passage I've come across in the Bible that's speaking about the tongue. Um, but I want to read from you from uh, James 3, verse 2. For we all stumble in sin in many ways. We all. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, never saying the wrong thing, he is a perfect man, fully developed in character and without serious flaws, able to bridle his whole body and reign in his entire nature, taming his human faults and weaknesses. You know, and it's pointing out who is perfect, who never stumbles in their words. You know, it's an obvi obvious question, but we all do at some point. And uh, it goes on to say, you know, we put a little piece in the horse's mouth in order to steer the whole body. And that's the same with the tongue. It says in verse 5, in the same sense, the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. Don't underestimate the power of your tongue. It might seem small, but it really has the power to direct your whole body, your whole course of your whole life. And um, <clears throat> the encouraging thing is, it's also to say, hey, none of us get it 100%. We all have areas where we need to um, uh, try and uh, rein in the tongue, as it says. But what is it that we need to do? Knowing now that the power holds no, sorry, the tongue holds the power of speaking life or death. And uh, I'd like to quote you, a lady who's one of my heroes, Margaret Stunt. She always said this, the Bible is like good deodorant. It doesn't work unless you apply it. And, you know, that's kind of funny, but it's so true. Sometimes we hear something, oh, that's a good word. But then we miss to apply it. Then it doesn't actually have any power in our lives. So what do we need to do? Number one, we need to stop, pray, and ask God to uh, speak to us. In what areas in our lives are we not speaking the right things? And he also needs to reveal to us the why behind our words. Because the Bible actually talks about the mouth and your words as fruits. 
So think about a tree, an apple tree. It has apples. The apple is signifying, hey, this is an apple tree. Likewise, your words is revealing what's already in your heart. So we need God's help to uh, show us those areas of our lives. Secondly, we need to ask for forgiveness. I'm again, so guilty of this, saying something I shouldn't have said, you know, there's been too many times to count when I've said something stupid. But what I've realized, what is so key, especially in my marriage, is to be quick to ask for forgiveness when I say something that's just not life-giving, building up. And uh, secondly, we also need to forgive others who have spoken bad words over ourselves. You know, a pastor once told me, your wounds are your responsibility. And uh, sometimes that can be a little bit of a harsh reality to accept. And, you know, regardless of how we got our wounds, we need to be responsible for what we're going to do with those wounds. Because if we choose to not forgive, if we choose to hold on, that's not going to hurt the person who hurt us. It's actually going to hurt us even more. And that's why forgiveness is so key. Thirdly, we need to be reading the word because how can we speak truth? How can we know truth if we don't take the time to allow God to sow truth into our own life by reading his word? And um, you know what? In Hebrews 10, it actually talks about, it's not just about speaking magical words off of a page, but it's speaking words in faith that God has sowed in our hearts. But we need to take the time to allow God to do the sowing so that we might speak out of faith what he has put in there. Um, you know, maybe you are believing lies and you don't even know that you're believing lies until God reveals his truth in, in his word. And uh, you know what? A lie is going to affect you as if it's true, even if it's not true. But anything believed as a truth will have the same effect. So that's why it's so important to allow God's word to redirect us. Um, and just, you know, now I've given you a lot of different references, different contexts, but I uh, really want to make this one point. By our words, we are standing in agreement with the life or with death. And uh, going back to um, Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power of life and death. So to a certain degree, the characteristics of your life are dependent on the words that you're speaking. And you know, a lot of places people are taking this verse and taking it to the extreme. They're saying you have creative power. You can create by your words. You know, the Bible said God spoke and there was light. But what this verse is actually talking about, it's not saying I'm going to speak something to make God come into agreement with me so that it will happen. No, it's actually saying I'm going to speak what God already spoke so that I can align myself with his truth, with his um, reality. And Think about it. The enemy wants to come to distort truth. If you think about Genesis 3, where we have Adam and Eve in the garden and the enemy, the devil is coming, the snake is coming, and he's trying to distort what God already told Eve. So he's making Eve question. He's saying, Eve, did God really say you cannot eat from that tree? Surely you will not die if you eat from that tree. You will become like God if you do. And the next verse says, Eve saw that the tree was good. She started to see what the enemy told her. And she then became, uh, she came into agreement with the enemy's words. And her agreement um, caused a certain action, which then had a certain outcome. So agreement, action, outcome. <clears throat> so why do we need to stop and ask God to speak to us in this area? 
you know, I, uh, I'll say it again. Sometimes we think we're not the worst of the worst. You know, there's always someone who's worse at speaking negativity or unbelief or um, just struggling in this area. So we make excuses for ourselves of why God needs to still speak to us in this area. And we're unaware. We're unaware of how our words can be so harmful to people. Even the little things, the little gray zones that we think, ah, you know, it's just a joke. But you know what the Bible actually says in Proverbs um, 26, 18 to 19, like a manic person shooting flames, arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbor by saying, I was only joking, you know, and by all means, I do love jokes, but there's a difference when it's a manipulative, a harmful, um, bad intention kind of joke. And we need to be aware of those things. You know, the Bible actually says, Matthew 12, that God's going to hold us accountable for the words that we're speaking. And he's giving us a choice, speaking life or speaking death. And um, we need to accept that our words do have a sense of a spiritual element to them. Because we do believe that there is power in declaring God's word, his faithfulness, his blessing, his authority in our lives. But then that means also that the opposite must exist. Think about it. The enemy has three intentions for your life, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And in the same way, our words, you know, we can come into alignment with those intentions. Our words can kill, can kill a dream, can kill a hope. Um, it can kill a joy, but it can also steal. It can steal people from knowing the truth from blessings, from um, relationships. It can destroy businesses, marriages. So our words are very powerful. And uh, we know Christ came that we might have a life and life in abundance. So let's make sure that we align our words with his word being a source of light and of life to others as well as to ourselves. So I'm very grateful that God, He is so loving, so kind, so gracious for every time I've definitely missed a mark. And um, I know that, you know, for some of us listening to this, we recognize, hey, I do want to have a change of heart. I don't want my words to be aligning with the enemy. I want them to be aligned with God's truth, God's life. And, uh, you know, before we are able to change our words, we need to have a change of heart. And therefore it would be my privilege actually to lead some of you who maybe you're listening for the first time, or maybe you've listened a few times, but you recognize I haven't declared, I haven't actually given my life in full allegiance to Jesus Christ, who is able to transform every and every one of us. You know, Romans 10.10, the Bible says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and you are saved. Today, I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to give full assurance that there is salvation and that there is forgiveness and that there is a fresh start. So if you're recognizing today, hey, Marie, I need that. I don't have that in my life. I need to uh, start over and I need to get my life right, would you pray for me? And I said, yes, it will be my honor. So let's just bow our heads and let's um, just repeat these simple words after me. Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness for sins. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you are the savior who died on the cross and rose again. Today, I uh, accept your salvation. Thank you for a fresh start. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who will lead me and guide me into knowing you deeper. And um, today, I'm a child of God. Amen. So if you pray that for the first time, I just want to say a big congratulations. You know, you should mark this day in your journal because 
Trust me, this is going to be a fundamental time in your life that you're going to keep coming back to and you're going to look at everything that God has done since this day in your life. So again, we just want to say welcome to the family and uh, let's go into this week being more aware of our words. Who are we aligning with? Are we speaking truth? Are we speaking life? Because let's remember our words will reveal what our heart agrees with. I wish you all a blessed week and I can't wait to see you again next Sunday. So let's uh, listen to Ben as he will take it from here. See you church. Bye. Je ne sais pas pour vous, mais pour moi, ce message de la part de Pasteur Maria me parlait personnellement. Je veux dire, moi, à la maison, je l'ai entendu plusieurs fois. Et la chose qui m'a réellement impacté, c'est le fait que ma déclaration révèle ce à qui ou à quoi mon cœur est en accord avec. Et pour ça, je dois faire attention avec ma déclaration cette semaine. Et je pense que c'est bon de prendre ça en considération, mais je sais que maintenant, aujourd'hui, il y a des personnes qui ont déclaré que Jésus était le Seigneur de leur vie. Pour la première fois. Ou même, ça fait plusieurs années que vous hésitiez, mais aujourd'hui, vous avez décidé de prendre la décision aujourd'hui de l'accepter dans votre vie. Et premièrement, on va vous dire félicitations. C'est la meilleure décision que vous avez pu prendre de votre vie. Et pour cela, on aimerait honorer cette décision. Et euh, on voudrait vous envoyer un cadeau qui est un livret e-book qui, qui vous explique différentes choses sur la foi chrétienne et on veut même répondre à vos questions. Pour cela, vous avez simplement besoin d'aller sur notre site web, de cliquer « J'ai dit oui à Jésus » et de remplir le formulaire. Et on aimerait simplement vous montrer une vidéo qui vous explique comment on peut faire cette étape. Alors, portez attention à l'écran. Si vous êtes nouveau et avez dit « oui à Jésus » aujourd'hui, Cliquez sur l'onglet « J'ai dit oui à Jésus ». Rendu sur la page, cliquez sur le bouton « Donner mes informations ». Ensuite, vous aurez simplement à remplir le formulaire avec les informations demandées, puis à le soumettre. Ainsi, vous resterez connecté à la vie de l'Église et cela nous permettra de mieux vous aider dans cette nouvelle décision que vous avez prise. Encore une fois, félicitations à toutes les personnes qui ont décidé de dire oui à Jésus aujourd'hui. Euh, C'est maintenant le commencement d'une belle et nouvelle aventure. Bienvenue dans la famille de Dieu. Et pour finir, comment est-ce qu'on va mettre l'enseignement de Pasteur Marie en application? Et pour cela, nous croyons qu'il serait bien de se rappeler de la citation qu'elle a mentionnée de Pasteur Margaret Stunt, qui parle d'appliquer la parole de Dieu dans notre vie. Parce que c'est bien beau la lire, mais c'est plus efficace de l'appliquer. Et pour cela, ce qu'on vous encouragerait à faire, c'est que cette semaine, dans les réseaux sociaux, partagez-nous quel est ce verset ou cette parole dans la parole de Dieu euh, qui vous encourage ou vous édifie. Ça peut être le verset que vous avez appliqué pour votre vie ou peut-être dans votre temps de dévotion, il y a cette parole-là qui vous a encouragé. Et on vous encouragera à faire un, un post dans soit votre Instagram ou sur votre Facebook et que vous taguez MCI Canada pour qu'on puisse le partager. Mais aussi qu'on croit que si tous ensemble, on fait cela qu'on partage la parole de Dieu. Ça va non seulement être la possibilité qu'en tant qu'Église, on puisse se partager entre nous, mais nous croyons que sur votre page, ceux qui vous suivent vont être édifiés par cette parole. Alors, soit une photo, ou même peut-être une petite vidéo qui explique comment ce verset s'applique sur votre vie, qui va sûrement encourager quelqu'un d'autre. Amen. Et maintenant, c'est la fin de notre service. Et euh, oui, c'est déjà la fin. On a une chanson par la suite de louange pour bien terminer. Mais je veux vous dire, je vous aime, on vous aime. Et euh, de la part d'Église MC Canada, passez une super de belle semaine. Restez, restons connectés ensemble à travers les différentes choses que l'on fait. Et on se voit dimanche prochain. God bless tout le monde.